When I first started out, I had a lot of anxiety about styling shoots, especially because my prop collection wasn't necessarily where I wanted it to be. And even though it's growing and it's a lot better, I find that there's a beauty in minimalism. And I want to show you the props that I use when I'm styling a minimal shoot. And a lot of these things you already have in your kitchen. And so it's going to make it really easy for you to get started. And I promise you, if you start here, if you work with little, I'm telling you, little becomes much. And then when you have a full arsenal, you're going to be rocking and rolling. And you might actually find yourself going back to your minimalist tools. If that sounds good to you, keep watching. I'm Kiana Adams from The Key Ingredient, a food photographer, educator, and recipe developer. And when I'm not developing content for myself, I'm here dropping knowledge, tips, tricks, and all things food photography here on my channel. With that said, I'm going to show you what we're going to be working with today. First and foremost, parchment paper. You guys know I love me some parchment paper, and so it's always going to be in the scene. Next, coasters. If you have not started getting your coaster collection on point, I advise you to do so. Coasters are really great for lifting, for adding additional shapes and little visual points of interest to your shoot. So get yourself some coasters. miniature baking sheets. Now I have like the mama to this one. I love a good baking sheet. Please bring on the baking sheets. They are your friend. You will need them. In addition to baking sheets, cooling racks. I have a rectangular cooling rack. I've seen circular cooling racks. Cooling racks are great because this with some cookies on top or something freshly baked, a napkin styled beautifully, and there's your shot. frying pans and small frying pans. Now I have this miniature frying pan, which I love. I've used it for a few shoots, but even in your cookware set, if you get the smaller frying pan, I've used those as well. And I can show you an image of where I use a smaller frying pan, but a small frying pan is a, it's your good friend because you can style with it and really make a nice visual impact. The cutting board. Cutting boards are great, especially when you're trying to style without plates. Charcuterie, chopped vegetables. I mean, a lot, this is a surface onto itself. And if you put it on top of another surface, then you've got multiple layers happening, which is really what you want when you're styling a shoot. So cutting boards. Last but not least, the blasted napkin dish towel, styling towel, whatever you want to call it. When it's done beautifully, it's great. And when it's not, it's like, Ugh! styling these things can be a headache, but luckily I've got a video on that and you can click right here to see it. But when done well, it's just, uh, it takes your breath away, right? When we see a good napkin, we're envious, but this and a couple of the other props make a great styled scene with minimal efforts, no plates, no problem. To start our no plate, no problem setup, I'm going to roll out my backdrop. When you're doing a no plate, no problem composition, you want to think about your lines and you want to think about layering. These are two key composition rules that help with visual interest and attracting the viewers. So let's get started. I'm starting with my prop cloth or styling napkin, and I'm just going to fold it in a way that gives it that leading line straight angle look that I like. I'm going to fold it over, fold it here, fold it here. And you can really have fun with this. So depending on how I set up the rest of my elements, I've got some lines here. I've got lines here. I've got lines here. And so these are all lines that can be used to direct the eye. Next, I'm going to place this cookie sheet. We have our cloth here. We're layering up, layering up. 
I have this cookie sheet and now I have this small little pan. If I wanted to line this with some crostini, do a dip right here, all of my lines and angles are leading you and your eye to come right here into the center. And depending on what I put here, whether it's chips or bread, or if I wanted to use other little dip bowls, it all is gonna center around this point here. Now, as I start to layer my composition even more, I have this wire rack, which I use for my regular baking as well. And now I'm adding some other visual interests here. So in my storytelling, if this is the finished product, then maybe I would have some bread or something that just came out of the oven or something that's cooling right here. So that way it comes in and it starts to come right here, which is my key element or my focal point. The other element that I like to use are these tiny baking sheets, and I'm gonna measure them out for you. So these are 10 by seven, and I love them. So now this is another part of visual interest. It's still not a plate, it's a tiny baking sheet. I have a baking rack. I have my round baking pan, this thing here, my little, little teeny frying pan. And so I'm creating all of this just with things that I already have in my kitchen. If you watched my video, my favorite food photography tools, please follow the link. It's a great video. It shows you all these little tools and elements that I use that can be found right in your kitchen or everyday life that you can use to enhance your food photography. So make sure you check that out. One of my favorite kitchen tools is parchment paper. And parchment paper for so many reasons. I mean, you'll see later on in the video, you can just use this alone, set food on it, and that can be what how you style the shoot all together in addition to the food. So when I use parchment paper, my trick is I love to ball it up first and then I unball it. And you can see there's all this texture that starts to come into play just from me crumpling it up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna unfold it and then crumple it up again. Perfect. So now what I do here, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I've lined this sheet right here and I have this texture from where I've pulled it all together and taken it apart. And so you have this here, you have your baking sheet, you have the wire rack, this element over here, my little skillet, my prop cloth, and then you can keep layering if you want to. You can stop here, you can take away, you can move forward. But what I'm gonna do just to show you how you can keep moving forward with this if you want to, if you really want like a really full pack scene, you can start adding your coasters. And I love adding coasters to a scene because they not only elevate your subject, but they also just add other points of visual interest. As you can see, this one is scalloped, but I've used square ones, I've used perfectly round ones, I've used wooden ones. Start thinking about, like if you go to uh, one of those big box stores, getting yourselves a collection of coasters because they really do come in handy. I can place one right here and get it sort of closer so these lines are intersecting and it's bringing your eye here and I can either place it here or I can place it up here. Now, when I start to add my food to this scene, I already have my props built up. So now I have a lot of visual interest. So if I sprinkle some ingredients down here through these holes, you'll see them. If I have some sort of food element or ingredient on the coasters, I can put a utensil here. I can put other elements here. So you start to really have a full, full scene. I haven't used a single plate or dish. Thank you.
Wasn't that fun, guys? I really had a good time showing you these simple setups using basic kitchen equipment. If you're like me, you already had these things roaming around your kitchen anyways. If you don't, that's okay. You can get them at any of the big box stores. They're really easy to come by because they're general use items. I didn't even break out my large arsenal of props today. So if you have any questions about this, please drop them in the comments below. You can send me comments and questions to my DMs on Instagram. Also, I wanna see your setups. Send me some photos of those. I wanna see what you guys create and I'll be happy to comment and make suggestions if that's what you're asking. Another thing that I wanna touch on before I let you go is preparing. Preparation is key for everything that you do in photography and food photography especially. And if you're struggling in food photography, it has little to do with your creativity and skill and everything to do with a lack of preparation. So I am here to help you with that. Hit the link down below, download my pre-production guide. In there, you're going to find all of my tips and tricks and everything that you need to know to do the heavy lifting at the front of your shoot instead of during or after. Your walk away feeling more successful, your workflow will improve, the quality of your shoots will improve, and you'll just walk away with a greater sense of pride and accomplishment and instead of being flustered and annoyed. So if that sounds good to you, hit that link, download my pre-production guide, and let's get shooting together. Thank you guys again for watching. I'm Kiana Adams from The Key Ingredient food photographer and educator, recipe developer, developing content for myself. But when I'm not doing that, I'm sharing my tips and tricks and all my knowledge of food photography and things of the such and sort with you. Remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you're notified every single time I post a video. Make sure you hit the like button as well. Be blessed, I'll see you on the next video. All right, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do that over again. <coughs> Excuse me so easily once again i'm gonna do that part again i'm gonna start again from the beginning i'm gonna start all the way over from the beginning close the door quietly please okay never mind i'm filming it's right mm -mm -mm. yes babe i'm filming <sighs> okay here we go wasn't that fun guys <clears throat> <clears throat> Ooh, that's not fun